Hello and welcome to Family Law in BC. My name is Stephanie Talbot and I'm a family lawyer in BC. I um, just want to remind you at the outset here that this information that I'm about to give is intended as information only. It is not legal advice and um, there's no substitute for um, seeking consultation with a lawyer about your own unique circumstances if you do have a family law issue that you're dealing with. This is some information that might um, give you, you know, an idea of the landscape, but certainly if you are having your own family law issues, you should seek out a family lawyer in your jurisdiction who can provide you with information um, and advice specified to your circumstances. So I thought that today we would talk about the big D, divorce, um, which is um, something that's regulated by the federal government under the Divorce Act. So it's similar from province to province. And when I'm talking about divorce specifically, I'm only talking about the act of getting a divorce order that gets you basically the dissolution of your marriage. So um, when people talk about divorce, oftentimes we're kind of lumping in all the other issues that might surround that, that you might have. So, you know, if you have kids, you might have parent, well, you definitely have parenting arrangements to sort out, child support, um, there might be spousal support, division of family property and debt. Those are all separate issues or not necessarily separate, but they're kind of um, side issues, let's say. Um, and we're just gonna be talking specifically about the divorce part of things. So it might be obvious, but if you're not legally married, if you're common law, then you're not required to get a divorce order. You would sort out any other issues you might have, but you're not required to get a divorce order. So that means that if you are able to sort out all your issues through negotiation and enter into a separation agreement, then that would be potentially the end of the road for you and you wouldn't have to go any further. You wouldn't have to start a court action. But if you are legally married and you do want to legally terminate that legal relationship, then you would need to get a divorce order. So that can only be done in the Supreme Court of British Columbia. You can't do it in the provincial court. Um, and there's three different grounds for divorce in Canada. So the first one that is most common that people rely on most of the time is just the ground of having been um, separated for a year or more. Um, and what that means is that you have, um, you know, formed the intention to terminate the relationship permanently and you have usually communicated that to your spouse and then you need to stop acting like you're married. So that would mean that you would stop sleeping in the same bed, stop engaging in um, sexual relations. Usually you would no longer share a bedroom. Um, in a lot of circumstances, people do live in separate residence once they've separated, but um, in some circumstances, people will um, live in the same residence for financial reasons or because they're still caring for children together, but then in that case, they're living together as roommates, not as romantic partners. Um, so that's the first one. Uh, and it just means that like, you wouldn't be able to formally obtain the divorce order until that full year of separation is up. The other two grounds for divorce are adultery and cruelty. And those are much more rare to come across in terms of them actually being relied upon for obtaining a divorce order in court. Um, and the reason for that is that if you want to, you know, try to use those things to get divorced sooner, it might not work out just because those things would need to be proved in court. Um, the person who's claiming divorce in the case of adultery cannot be the person who actually committed the adultery. So if you're relying on that ground, you would have to be, let's just say the wronged party um, in that scenario. And same goes with cruelty, right? Like if you're the one who's been committing cruelty, you're not gonna be able to rely on that as a ground. And then like when it comes to adultery, um, if you're relying on that ground for divorce, it can't be condoned. So you can't you know, forgive the person who did it and then try to rely on it. Um, as a ground for divorce. So where these ones become problematic is that um, they have to be proven in court and in the, ca in, in the case of adultery, for example, that would mean that either you would have to have evidence that the other person committed adultery or you would have to have them swear an affidavit admitting to committing adultery and there's not you know a ton of people who would necessarily want to do that. And the same goes for cruelty. So 
um, what we see is that even in the cases where, you know, the, potentially those things could be claimed, we do just end up relying on the ground of a year of separation to obtain a divorce order just because, um, you know, if you were going to try to prove those other two grounds in court, it might end up taking more than a year anyway. And by that point, it kind of um, loses the point, right? Um, now, when you do actually obtain a divorce order, um, that does set in place um, a bit of a limitation period in terms of dealing with other issues um, that might be connected to your divorce. Um, so basically, once you've obtained a divorce order, then you have a two-year period to make any other claims that might be associated with your relationship. And also, if you have children, um, the court will not grant you a divorce order until you have arrangements in place for parenting arrangements and child support if there is any payable. So those things do have to be sorted out before the court will grant you a divorce order if you have kids. If you don't have kids and there's other issues like the spousal support and division of property and debt, the court doesn't really care um, about whether or not you've dealt with those yet. But in circumstances where those issues have been raised in an action, um, the court normally won't grant the divorce order until everything else is sorted out, um, unless the parties agree otherwise. So I have had situations where the parties are agreeable to having a divorce order granted before all the other issues are sorted out, and we've been able to obtain that. But in most cases, you know, that's kind of something that you could use as incentive to get people to sort out all the other issues if they're motivated by the idea of actually getting a divorce order. So sometimes that's something that we want to kind of keep in our pocket um, just to use as a tool to encourage negotiation. Um, so that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for listening. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to pop those in the comments. And obviously I'll put my website address down there again. Um, if you want to work with me, feel free to reach out. And um, yeah, we'll leave it there for today. Thanks for tuning in.